This is the video for Friday, May the 29th, and we got some of what we asked for today, and we got it in the way of volume. Uh, we also got a bit of response with the McClellan oscillator, so we can look at the charts. Let's pull them in here. So we've got the McClellan oscillator that was beaten down now for the last two days. So we had high, lower high, lower high. The over first oversold line, overbought line, is right here, and the neutral zero line is right here. So I don't think there's a big chance that we go down to zero over the next couple of days to neutral. It's likely that we try another bounce to see if we can make a higher low. And what we got in terms of volume was pretty spectacular. This is the most volume we've had in one, well, let's count this week, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks. Now, it was a Friday. Uh, it came right after um, the two o'clock speech by Donald Trump, where everyone was afraid that he was going to pull the China trade deal, but he didn't. What he did was pretty much nothing. Uh, put some restrictions on Hong Kong, big deal. Um, pull out of the WHO, that has nothing to do with China, um, pretty weak. Uh, but the volume of declining shares was higher than advancing shares, and that's now for two days in a row. So the week was split uh, in terms of, uh, of volume, probably pretty even over the whole week, and the summation index continues to drive forward as the Dow Jones continues to move up. Now, we've been talking about the 200 moving average. So let's look at the SPX and a couple of things happened. One is that this gap that was created uh, the 27th, the morning of the 27th, got filled pretty neatly. If you look, you can see right there that we did move down just below the gap we cleared the gap and there were buyers just above the 8 EMA. So we can clear that gap out of the way. And now the next one is a little bit lower. So are we going to go down and test that gap? So what we said we would do would be to come down and possibly test the 200. Um, we did test the 200, then we moved up. Uh, I thought we would move higher and then move down. Um, that, that's still a possibility. We still have two gaps to clear before we do a test of the cloud out in the future. But the 200 moving average was what everybody had their eye on in the S&P. But look at the Dow Jones. It's a different situation here where the 200-day moving average, the uh, EMA, is definitely posing resistance to the 30 stocks in the Dow. So the Dow is a different situation than the SPX. Let's look at the NASDAQ, and the NASDAQ is way above its 200, so there's no question. Uh, that's a weekly there, but it doesn't matter. It's still a daily 200. It's uh, way above, and it was some time ago that we filled that gap, so we can uh, get rid of that gap now. This is what the NASDAQ looks like. Pretty strong as it took out the cloud at its weakest point. So we are, did we close this gap down here? I guess you could say that this gap was closed as well. And this one we're gonna be calling closed as well. Uh, and this gap here is the one that we just shut down. So um, we've got the cloud, we've got the 50, we've got a pretty strong NASDAQ 100. This is the only top 100 stocks in the NASDAQ. Apple had a pretty good day, still continues to form this handle on the cup and handle and if the technical pattern bears out it's going to break higher but we're stopped by this 200 percent Fibonacci that we explained last Thursday in the video or Wednesday in the video um, and it's also the alt represents the all-time high so there's a couple of things holding us back the three things the handle on the cup and handle pattern the 200 percent and the previous all-time high caterpillar pullback very nice it was just going up too fast for my liking because I have 135 short calls 
on my stock. I want to keep the stock long enough to, I've, I've earned the dividend that's being paid uh, the week after next, but I want the next two dividends as well. And my short calls are out in November. So those are really just protecting me from a flash drop should that happen in Caterpillar. It was just getting a little bit too strong and was approaching 125 when it smacked into the 200 moving average. And today, uh, its low would have caught, if we put um, a mark right here on the low of today, we see that we didn't get support on the cloud, we got support on the 50 uh, EMA for the Chiku Span and ended the day above the cloud. So that's a good sign and we finished the day at the high of its range with volume a little bit higher than the 20 day moving average. Home Depot is just a great stock. Love that stock. Now June the 3rd uh, is going to be when it first trades X dividend for $1.50. So expect a bit of a pullback um, as the dividend gets taken out of the value of the stock. But if you can hold on to this stock until Wednesday morning, then you're going to be uh, getting the dividend payable on June the 15th, I believe. So pretty close to after the um, ex-dividend date, which I really like. Why have an ex-dividend date and then pay the stock dividend out 45 to 60 days later? So many companies do that and it's so annoying. NVIDIA continues to uh, try to break free of the top of this Gartley pattern um, and it hasn't been successful. Whirlpool, uh, smacked down by the 200, as we saw uh, in the case of Caterpillar. Uh, FSLY, still looking like it's going up. If you drew it, you could draw a channel in here, and uh, you'd be looking to buy it over this point, and then add more over the top line of the channel, which would be probably around 47.50. Uh, Netflix, again, uh, we're watching this C in a shark pattern, which would call for a retreat down to 150. I just don't see it happen, but it is a technical pattern, nonetheless, that we have to keep our eye on. And AT&T continues just to chug along in this broad um, flag pattern here, um, which would be defined by putting a box around this. So we could see a break to the downside it just depends how long this continues. But if it continues much longer, then this pattern should break to the downside. So next week, let's look at the weekly chart for the S&P. The S&P now has finished above the cloud. Pretty darn bullish. And looking to break, and it has broken above the 50 daily EMA. This is a weekly chart, remember, but all my moving averages are always pinned to the daily values. So we're looking at resistance next week somewhere in the area of 3082. So if we can put a mark there, let's put a mark right there, which would be next week's um, right around there. Why can't I? Sorry, wrong function key. So we're looking for this approximate area right here, 3084 as being resistance for the market next week if the Chiku Span plays out its role in defining resistance. Um, this would mean that the range next week would be somewhere touching on the bottom of the cloud and resistance on that arrow. So let's look for that sort of range next week. Um, the volatility index uh, is higher than complacency, but it's hanging at its 200-day moving average also, excuse me, also um, and flattening out. So that's an indicator really that there's some confidence in the market. So Trump didn't give us the worst in that um, uh, briefing. Um, Let's just see how he lashes out next because he's falling in the polls and he's trying to create diversions and um, maybe buying military stocks would be not a bad idea.